But anyways, back to the draft stuff. Yeah, I mean, what as as for what we're getting ready for, that's a good question, man. I don't know. Um, well, because because I, I, I think that's my question. Because if you look at it, I don't know if you saw this other article. Um, I can send this to you later, but it was kind of interesting. Mm. It's it's once again they're floating the idea. This is a CNN, who I'm not always a huge fan of, but it says Biden administration moves towards allowing American military contractors to deploy in Ukraine. So I'm I'm just curious if they think this basically like maybe the conflict is is going away and they're trying to escalate it or i don't quite understand what's happening um yeah i mean well so what two weeks ago biden leaked that uh he had given ukraine permission to use offensive weapons uh or u.s weapons rather provided it was in a defensive uh way against russia into the russian interior um which is by definition not defensive obviously right because I don't think I need to go into that any farther, but uh, then two weeks later, you see it happen, right? They're shooting rockets over Sevastopol, which is a, 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 one of the other criticisms people have. Are, why are you why are you going on vacation in a war zone? People live there, dude. It's a it's a place where human beings live. They are not on vacation, you idiot. Uh, at any rate, um, the fact that he said that U.S. contractors can start deploying there means that somebody in the military industrial complex gave him a call and he was like, hey, if you guys aren't going to do something, we'd like to go over there and start making some money. So you don't think it's kind of a widening of the conflict? You just think it's more that contractors see an opportunity to get some money? I don't think it's contractors alone seeing an opportunity. I think it's the federal government seeing an end around Congress. We haven't declared war in well, World War a while, II. hasn't it? Yeah. We haven't, Congress hasn't declared a war since World War II, and we've been in a bunch of them. We've been in constant war, actually. Uh, let's see, 20, 28, 30, 30, about 40 years of active war since World War II ended um, 70 years ago. So that's a majority of the time we've been in active war. Um, and Congress hasn't declared any war. This is an end around, right? It's a way to get us involved in the conflict. Uh, and this is how it works. The U.S. Congress earmarks money for Ukraine. Well, what does that really mean? 75% of that money never leaves the United States. It goes to weapons companies and a KBR for food and all sorts of other stuff. The 25% that actually goes to Ukraine isn't for humanitarian assistance. We're funding their government and their pension system for their federal employees um, right now. So this will just be more of that, that stuff. It'll be part of that 75% will just go to, uh, you know, uh, a triple canopy or 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 z or whatever the fuck they're calling themselves these days do you think that the draft situation like or the the selective service situation is related to this one unrelated or or what do you think what do you think they're doing with that because it just it does seem weird because i guess like everybody has to enroll at 18 anyway right like some people do mm -hmm. some people might not um but it takes away the human agency of it, right? Like it takes away the ability of someone actually having to go do something and you're just automatically there. So like the privacy concerns make sense, but it also takes away the human agency. So I guess, I guess why is it for this conflict? Is it for something else or what does it mean? Um, well, I mean, the easiest answer Occam's razor would say that, um, and, and I can confirm this to some degree from uh, folks I know that are in government that recruiting is falling like very short in all branches right now. So we have these, uh, l let's call it postures in the military, right? So if we're in and think, think of it, this is, this isn't exactly correct, but think of it from DEF CON five, which is lowest to DEF CON one, which means defense condition one, we're all ready to fight right now. Um, we call it readiness in the military. So are we ready to do X? So, the Pentagon uh, will decide what are the potential dangers, militarily speaking, globally. We're like, all right, well, cool. We need this amount of people to, to do this job, this amount of people to do this job. If this happens, then we have X amount of days, weeks, or months to recruit people, get them trained up for this job, right? So it's all kind of an algorithm, I guess you could say. And we're falling – once you fall a certain amount short of that, then things like stop loss get triggered, which, by the way, have already happened in the special operations community. People have been stopped from getting out of the military already. Just for, um, for people been, that don't know, like stop loss is basically when they automatically reenlist you, correct? Yeah, against your will. Mm -hmm. It's slavery, basically, right? That's how that works. Or indentured servitude, I guess, because you're technically you're getting paid. Um, but 
when you fall below a certain retention rate and recruitment rate, then that will trigger a draft. That's just how we're, whether we're at war or not. Right. So the idea is, um, they tried stop loss already. Now they're trying all sorts of other stuff. Um, but there, my understanding is if we don't start hitting recruiting numbers by 2026, they're going to institute a draft. Now, if Trump's in office, I don't think that's going to happen, frankly. Um, but if the guy who's in there now is, uh, who knows, because he's not awake. So who knows what's going to happen there? So I guess like looking at it then, the, the thing I, I'm trying to figure out, Dan, when you look at the U.S., like on a global scale, you know, I don't like conflict. I don't like, like war, but I get sometimes you have to fight them. But at the same time, it feels like we're involved in a lot of places that we shouldn't really be. And I guess looking at it, how do you think the rest of the world is is looking at us at the moment? Um, well, I mean, uh, hopefully they didn't watch the debate last night <laughs> because they're looking at a president. They, they're looking at a guy who is definitely not in charge of his own mental faculties, much less the country. Right. Um, and this this is my favorite thing going on in politics right now. The The dumbest lie being told that people believe is that Trump is a Russian asset. And here's the math on that. Right. So Bush, George W. Bush, Russia invades Georgia, Obama, Russia invades Crimea, Biden, uh, Russia invades Ukraine, Trump, nothing, crickets the whole time. Right. And we had uh, a, a, a halt to the expansion of BRICS, which is the the uh, economic partnership between some South American countries, China, so on. Right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And somehow that equals Trump being a Russian asset like that. That math to me is like, wow, but that's two plus two equals five. It's it's the brave new world stuff or or uh, yeah it's it's like it, when they can brazenly lie like that and then leverage the intelligence agencies and the department of justice to reinforce that lie that's a big problem for us and i guess where is it going then like you know like like as we go closer to this election you know we saw the debate last night um i know after people, when people have seen this they'll already have seen um my debate recap episode which was that was a fun one but i guess where where does this go? Do they replace Biden? Does he win in November? Like, how does this whole thing actually go from here? Because I, you know, I don't think Trump is the solution to everything, but I think it's kind of better than the alternative at the moment. And I, I guess looking at it, where do we go from here? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, to the to the why about all this, um, people will say anything to get into power and then even more to stay in power. Right. Yeah. To say anything it doesn't matter. Um, but the ultimate power is telling a lie and having people believe it, even though they know it's not true. Like the emperor's new clothes, right? We all know yeah. this story. Guy walks in naked and his power is that nobody has the courage to tell him that he's naked, right? Um, that's what, that's what uh, uh, 1984 and Brave New World were really about, is about manufacturing consent, about getting so deep into somebody's mind, both intellectually and with regard to their fear, that they're incapable of making rational decisions anymore. So they have no choice, but to trust the government, right? That's where it's headed. It's, a, and it may, maybe it's intrinsically nefarious and maybe it's just part of nature. Maybe it's like the struggle between gravity and fusion, right? That one thing needs the other to balance out. And, uh, you know, political power is like, uh, uh, the juggernaut. Once he starts running downhill, there's no stopping him. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't like, I, I there's no need to assign evil to it necessarily. But yeah, I don't think evil can be a, a like malice can be a sign where incompetence exists, right? I think a lot yeah, of that's people. That's razor, yeah. A lot of people want to say like, "Oh, it's evil," and these people are evil. I, I, Dan, I think it's simpler than that. I think they're just dumb. Like, I think that's a big the, part yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you can I, just imagine yourself in like if you ever went to boot camp, uh, if you had a platoon guide who was a knucklehead, or if you had an RA in college who was a knucklehead or whatever, right? Like a captain on a baseball team or something that was just an idiot or somebody that got put in charge that definitely should not have been in charge. Maybe it's your middle manager at your cubicle job or where, where, whatever you do. Uh, and you see that person struggle with the power and the responsibility and they just can't handle it. So where do they, what do they always do? They do one of two things.